Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, the class selector um, in HTML and CSS. So selectors are used when we want to select an element in a web page and apply a style or theme to that uh, in CSS code. And there are many types of CSS selectors that we can use. Um, we've already been in the previous tutorials using the element selector. So that's when you um, apply a theme to uh, a certain element or type of element on the web page. So for example, a H1 size heading or a paragraph, a paper paragraph, or a link or an image. So these are these are examples of um, element selectors. So H1, P, those are element selectors. In, in uh, our CSS code, we could say, all right, H1, I want to um, choose for the font. I want to use Arial and you could change the color and so on. So that's an element selector. Uh, but we can also use two other types of selectors and they are class selectors uh, and ID selectors. And there, there are more selectors than that. But uh, a class selector is uh, used when you want to apply a style to uh, any element on a web page that is given uh, a particular class name. So for example, um, rather than applying a theme to all headings or all H1 uh, elements on the page, you might want to give some of your H1 headings um, a name, a class name, and apply a theme just to those, but not to others. Or you might want to have different, um, different styles for different um, headings, different H1 headings. So you can create classes where you um, apply a style to all of the elements that use that class. Um, for example, a style of green text with a yellow background could be applied to multiple, par multiple paragraphs um, that use that class name, but not to others that don't use that class name. All right, um, so that's the class selector, and there's also the ID selector. Um, so ID selectors are unique for each element and are used when you want to apply a style to just uh, one element on a, on a web page. So for example, if you want one heading to be completely unique, and stand out um, from all the other headings and to have a different theme, then you might give that heading a unique ID and apply a, a theme or style to that ID. So it's just used um, for that, that thing. So classes usually use for many, uh, applying style to many elements, um, whereas IDs are, are just unique for one. Okay, so um, if you've already gone through the previous tutorials and you'll be familiar with um, element selectors as we've been using those, but in this tutorial, we're going to focus on the class selector, and then in the next tutorial, we'll look at using IDs. So you can see in my code here uh, in the body section of the page, I've already got a H1 size heading, and I've got a um, paragraph, right? So what I could do is, and I might have uh, many headings, so I might actually create over here, create a second heading, uh, and, oops, just make another paragraph. So, all right, there we go. So we've got a heading here and a paragraph and another heading and another paragraph. Okay, so what I can do is give uh, this heading a class name. So I can say class equals, and I might just want to call this uh, headings. All right. So this means that now in my CSS code, I can refer to, or I can create um, a class called headings and then specify the theme for all of the elements that would use um, that, that class. All right, so I can say dot. So dot, when I add a dot in CSS code, that means that I'm now um, creating a class with this name, so class called headings. And in the curly brackets, I can um, start specifying the theme. So I might say font family Arial. Uh, I might say uh, color. Um, let's go green. Okay, and we could do some other things there as well. We could change the background color, the padding, whatever it is. All of this uh, information here, this theme, is going to be applied only to elements that use. Um, this class name and this class can then uh, be used just by one element or it could be used for many elements and it doesn't even have to be the same type of element. I could use um, the headings class for H1 size heading but if I create a H2 size heading 
I could still use the same class or even a paragraph. All right, so I've saved that code. We can go and refresh the page and there we go. We've got two headings and paragraphs, but we can see only this heading at the top is green and font Arial because we've only applied the class to that heading. But if I was to go and copy this class and apply it to the other heading as well, then we would see it would see that it would also um, have that theme because we've given it specified um, for this heading to use that class. Now, as I just mentioned, it doesn't um, have to be the same type of element necessarily. So I could apply um, my headings class to a paragraph as well. It's going to be a different size because it's a paragraph, not a heading, but we can see it's still green and um, font Arial. All right, so that's how you create classes. All right, so just as an example, I might now create um, another class uh, called, um, let's just say, we'll call it blue. All right, so anything that has this class is going to have color blue. All right, and then we might also create another class and we'll call this large. And anything that has this class is going to have a font size of, say, 20 point. All right, so for my paragraphs, I might for the first paragraph say class equals blue. So that's going to be a blue paragraph. And for this one, I might say class equals large. So it's going to be a large paragraph, but it's not going to be blue. All right, if we've saved all that, we can go and refresh the page and we can see this one's blue because it's using the blue class. And this one is size 20 because it's using the large class. Okay. However, we can go a step further than that, and we can actually apply multiple classes to an element. So if I wanted, I might, well, let's say I wanted this second paragraph, I want it to be large, but I also want it to be blue as well. Well, I can actually say large blue. So now there's two separate classes specified here. That means two classes will be applied to this paragraph. So it's going to be both blue and font size 20. Okay, we're going to refresh the page. There we go. It's a blue paragraph. It's um, size 20 as well. So I could specify multiple classes that are assigned to an element just by adding a space and then putting in the class name. All right. And just remember when you're creating classes in your CSS code, classes always start with a dot. So when we refer to an element type, all right, so when we refer to a type of element like P for paragraph or H1 size heading or H3 size heading, or whatever, they don't start with dots or periods, but when we are creating a class, it always starts with a period or a dot. Okay, um, when we create IDs, they start with a hashtag, but we'll look at that in the next tutorial. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.